Encryption is a process by which two parties can communicate with each other in such a way that if their communication gets intercepted, their message can't be read. And this is a, a process that may invoke images of spies in trench coats, you know, sharing bomb codes with each other or something really high intrigue like that. But really, we all tend to benefit from encryption, most of us in our daily lives. A good example of this would be a credit card transaction, maybe buying something online where you need to send your credit card number and you want this to be done in a secure way. Another example is a web interface for your email or Facebook or something where you may notice that there's a little padlock symbol that appears up in the address bar of your browser. Anytime you see that little padlock symbol, your message is being scrambled up before it gets sent to the server, which descrambles it, and the same is true in the opposite direction. The server scrambles up its message before sending it to you, and then you descramble it. So how does your computer know how to unscramble and descramble these messages? Well, to go into the details of this, we're going to introduce a few characters to our story. So first we'll meet Alice. Alice wants to communicate securely with a guy named Bob, but they're going to want to do it via a public channel. What is a public channel? It's just some method for sending messages that could be intercepted by an adversary. The adversary, her name is Eve in this story. Eve likes to eavesdrop. Somebody who's tapped into your phone line or your internet connection can read all of the information flowing back and forth on that channel, which is why you want to encrypt it. Now the best possible way for Alice and Bob to share a secret message is for them to meet ahead of time and share with one another a giant number called a secret key. If they both have the same secret key, Alice can, for instance, convert both her message and this number into big strings of ones and zeros called bits, and she can add them together bit by bit before sending the message. Remember, the secret key is just a string of bits that will look like a random assortment of ones and zeros, but Alice and Bob share the exact same string of bits. Now, after adding her message to the secret key, if Eve reads the scrambled message, she's going to see gibberish and won't know the secret key to subtract from this to get the plain text back. Bob, however, does have the secret key, and the first thing he'll do when he gets the encrypted message from Alice is subtract each bit of the key from each bit of the message, which will unscramble it for him and he can read it. So this sounds great, right? Both Alice and Bob now have a way of communicating with each other that's just as secret as the secrecy of the key that they shared before they started. Alice and Bob only need to keep Eve from being able to learn the secret key in order to be able to communicate without her being able to read it. But this scenario doesn't resemble very many real world situations because the step where Alice and Bob generate and share this gigantic secret key had to happen in person before they were able to communicate securely over a public channel. That's called a private channel. They used a private channel to share their secret key with one another. You can think of Alice handing Bob a giant binder full of thousands of pages covered in ones and zeros. This is clearly not practical in most situations, such as when you want to make a credit card purchase from a person you don't know ahead of time. What Alice and Bob need, therefore, is a way to use a public channel to generate a shared secret key and they don't know ahead of time if Eve is listening in on the public channel. This problem is addressed by something called quantum key distribution, which is a super cool way that Alice and Bob can use the wacky rules of quantum mechanics to generate a shared secret key. Quantum key distribution typically works by having Alice and Bob send little particles of light, called photons, to each other over the public channel, an optical fiber in this case. However, we want to be able to describe how this process works without going into the quantum physics of photons. So instead, what we're going to do is invent a little guy who's going to follow a set of rules, and he's going to mimic all of the physics of these photons. So we're going to have a box, and inside this box is going to be this little guy, this little homunculus living in there. In fact, there's an infinite supply of these boxes with an infinite number of homunculi living inside these boxes. The homunculus has a big paper map with him in the box, and it has the cardinal directions of the compass written on the map. If you've ever used a map inside an enclosed space, like a car, but particularly in a box, you know that it's awfully hard to unfold the whole map inside this enclosed space. So typically, what do you do? You fold the map in half or something and look at just the part that you care about. And the same is true for this little homunculus. What he actually does is look at half of the map and fold the rest up behind on the back. 
Now, this little homunculus guy is going to be fairly peculiar. He's got some very specific rules that he won't break, and this is how we mimic the behavior of a quantum particle.